Your mark. It's full of drawings and illustrations of the seven men and corporate art services and by Ashland Oil Incorporated and its Valvoline and Super America divisions interested in improving quality education in West Virginia. <laughs> Hi, I'm Commander Mark, and this is the Secret City, a place of fun and fantasy and adventure. On this program, I'll show you how to draw in three dimensions using the magic word density. Now, first we'll warm up by drawing an arched bridge, and then we'll draw a winding pathway, sort of a viaduct, that will show you some density. Now, the fun comes when we create an arched bridge spanning a deep crevice in the underground on the Secret City mural. Met a man and two Secret City Club members Betsy Jablonski and Reed Miller are here today. They'll show us how to make some human-like hand puppets, and they'll put on a puppet show. <laughs> I know you want to become a member of the Secret City Club, too, so I'll tell you how easy it is to join. Now, here's what you need to follow along today. You need your drawing pad, your drawing pencil, your activity notebook, so you can take some notes on how to create your own hand puppets. Now, you gather those materials, and I'll be right back. So your courage is all pumped up, and you're ready to boldly blast across this piece of paper and draw in three dimensions. Now, we're going to learn a magic word today. It's called density. And I'll show you what that is right now. You notice how the near part of this bridge or this viaduct is drawn clear, a little more detail, a little more distinctly, and it gets hazier and fainter as you go into the background. Now, that's density at work for you, and I'll tell you more about that. Take your pencil, loosen your hands up, bounce around a little bit. Okay, now let's draw a line in direction seven, a dark line in direction one. This is the beginning of our bridge. Make sure you're nice and loose with this guideline and then you can darken in later. This is direction seven. Now turn the corner, direction one, and then it gets lighter and lighter as it goes into the background. This is gonna be our winding viaduct, our arched bridge winding back into the distance. So we draw the winding line, almost like a snake winding back into the distance. And this is a good idea for roadways, or pipe systems, or in our case, arched bridges or arched roadways. Okay, slanting back into the distance. Now we'll draw the other side. Now see this point right here? Now draw a dot horizontally straight across here. This is where you're aiming this line. We'll draw it really light to start with, and we'll go back in and we'll darken it in. Direction seven. Now it stretches a little further out around these corners. Now from this dot, go horizontally across here go back in the same direction and again it gets lighter and lighter less distinct as it goes in the background that's what density is as you disappear into the background and you don't draw quite as clearly that's because of the atmosphere things get lighter and they're almost like if you were standing on one side of a cliff or the Grand Canyon or one side of a forest the trees and the rocks and the cliffs would look closer to you if they're right next to you and as things get further away they get hazier and less vivid now darken it very clearly, very vividly, this first part of the bridge, and really light on the bottom because we're going to draw the arches spanning right here. Draw a light guideline. And then we'll draw a number of arches, vertical lines, a vertical line. Make sure this lines up with the side of your paper. This is vertical, nice and dark, and then curve the top. And then we'll draw another vertical line. Leave a room here for another one. See, this could kind of shrink in size they get further away from you and that's using that other word size as things get further away from you they get smaller it makes them look like they're receding in the, into the picture also see i'm leaving room for one more small archway make sure it arches all the way up to the top up here see it's thicker and then one more tiny one way back here i'll fix that just a bit now we'll put thickness it goes all the way across see how thick this is well this is going to be a very thick archway very thick tunnels going through here, direction one lines. And then we'll add some shading to make it look a little more detailed, a little more 
distinct. Are you keeping up with me? Hope you had your pencil sharp. This is a real elaborate drawing. Okay, now I'm going to darken in the top of the roadway. Just so you can even tell it's even clearer. And back over here, using density. Add some more shading. Okay. Now, you could put in a window here, an archway. I think I'll worry about putting the thickness on the roadway back here. Hello, Commander. I'll... Well, hello, Meta Man. How are you today? Just fine. Commander... It fascinates me how you can make this bridge seem so close to me right here, and how it just fades off in the distance. You know what that, that's called, don't you? What's that? Well, it's the magic word today. It's density. Well, you know what the regular definition of density is, right? Oh, uh, maybe you should explain it to me again, Commander. Well, most people will consider density as volume, or the denseness, denseness, that's a hard word to say, but the density of an object. Well, in drawing, when you make an object right here a little clearer, a little more distinct, you see, it looks like it's closer to you, and then as you get further away, you get hazier, and a little less vivid, and just, just because of the atmosphere, see, it's further away, and so your eye can't really make out the details as clearly, and so... Commander, I really believe See that. how that winds away like yes. that? And then I'll even, just barely even dot in the back back there, you can just barely see that, and it winds further off into the distance, and it's real hazy. Commander, this gave me an idea for another puppet show. I Great, have I love that yesterday, that one you did. And you painted your hand again? Yes, I did. Oh, and what kind of creatures do you have today? Oh, it's a surprise for you, Commander. <laughs> okay, I'll be watching, all okay. right? Okay, I'll see you later. See you later, Metabad. Now, once again, some more arches. But see, these arches are clear, They're drawn darkly. I'm even going to draw them even darker. You can really see that they're closer. These all the top. See the arches? They all line up in direction 7, the top of them. I'll draw a guideline for the top of the arches going in this direction. Start back here in the corner, a little smaller, vertical lines, vertical lines disappear behind here, vertical lines, and then some more arches. These are really tall once they get past this peekaboo line here. Get smaller again as they go away. Squeeze one more in here on the corner. See, it's getting less distinct because of density. This is a long drawing. See how long it winds through your drawing? These are really good to add to your secret city kingdoms or your secret city universes if you want to do this. Or here's a trick you can use right here. I'll show you something. See, I'm going to go in, but I'm going to do something different just on this one to show you. I'm going to draw an archway inside of an archway. That's kind of a neat idea, huh? See how you can put an archway inside of an archway? I'll draw this archway and just make that tunnel go away. Make that go into the direction 7 line. The direction 7 line there. And this just disappears behind here so you can't really see it. Now when you add the shading, Take your pencil, blend it down, blend it down. I like that idea. See, anytime you can add extras like that, it makes it a little more fun, doesn't it? it makes it a little more interesting. Okay, and use my finger, blend it down. Blend it down here. Down here. Now, this is where I really start getting lighter and hazier on these arches, you can barely even see the detail. It's really loose and sketchy. You can see the thicknesses there, just about, and then you can see the arches back here, but you can't really see them too clearly. Too See how light they are? And I'll put the thicknesses in there, and then I'll draw these really light archways, because you see it's getting further away. Okay. Darken this in just a bit. See how density really helps you? It really makes your drawing come toward you and go away from you. It helps make your drawing look three-dimensional. Draw, draw, draw. Practice your drawing at least, what, 30 minutes a day. And the word to keep in your mind today, density. Now, when you pick up your pencil and you start to draw, do you lose track of time? Is that is that your favorite point in the day? Well, that's my favorite point in the day when I start to draw, is because I love to draw, and I know you love to draw, right? Well, there's never been a special club just for people who like to draw. 
So, you know what I've done? Is I've organized a special club. It's just for people who like to draw, just for you. It's called the Secret City Club. Now, each week I have a special drawing I want you to complete. And as soon as you finish it, you put it into an envelope, you put a stamp on it, and as soon as you drop it into the mailbox, I'll make you an automatic member of the elite, the super cool, the Secret City Club. Now, I want to make this club more popular than, than pizza, okay? So send in your drawings right away. Now, this week's drawing to do is to create your own Secret City planet inhabitant, the kind of people or creatures that live on your Secret City planet. Now, here's an example of what Reed Miller, now he's our special club member, our guest today, and he'll be playing with some hand puppets, but look at this nice drawing, nice shading. Really interesting creature, isn't it? That's his planet inhabitant. Let me show you another one. Here's one done by Betsy, the other club guest we have today. See that? Really, ima really imaginative, really inventive. Superb drawing. And that's her Secret City Creature Inhabitant. Let's see another one. This one's done by Cindy Khan, another Secret City Club member. Isn't that just really imaginative? Look, a nice shading and density. You notice how she uses density here? It gets hazier and less distinct as those creatures get further away. Now, as soon as you finish your drawings, send them into the Secret City Club Post Office Box 444, Moraga, California, 94. Five, five, six. Hello. Nice day today. Well, you must be new in the neighborhood. I haven't seen you before, and I'm sure I would remember that face. You don't talk much, do you? I never met anyone with one with three eyes before. You must be very observant, because someone would... Oh, well, maybe he's shy. <laughs> I've been creating characters again on my hands, hand puppets. And today, I have club members, Betsy Jablonski and Reed Miller, to help me with another puppet show. Reed, can you show me the, your puppet design? What I've done is made, made my hand into a comfortable position and made a face out of the position. I made a nose, hair, and eyes. Yes, and it's really important to get a comfortable position so your hand doesn't get too cramped. Betsy, let's see your design. Well, like Reed, I had to find a comfortable position for my fingers, and then I looked for um, a place to put the features, like her eyes and nose and hands. I like how you made those eyes out of the tips of your fingers and the nostrils there. That's a really nice idea. We're going to show you what we've done with our puppet hands in a puppet show. Ready? Places. A mayor of a city stood on a bridge and looking over the town said, we need a bridge. Citizens of the town, Take my advice. A bridge would be attractive. It would be nice. But, Mayor, I am curious. Where would it go? I really don't think you should build... No, no, no. It should be placed where everyone can see. Put it in the park. And cut down the trees. The main street downtown would be a good spot. Too crowded, too narrow. It won't be seen. I think not. Let's build it over the library, or over the lake. Your suggestions don't make any sense. For a bridge is a mistake. Preposterous. Ridiculous. I don't want that repeated. But you should only build a bridge if one is really needed. To build a bridge to go nowhere doesn't make much sense. It's as foolish as building on top of a roof, a bench, or a fence. I hate to admit it, but I think he is right. But let's not forget the idea, just in case we find the site. Well, that was fun, and that was easy to do. And we're going to show you how we created our own puppets from our hands. Let's take some paint here, and what we've done is found some paint that is water-based paint. It's very important that it's water-based, because water-based paint goes on your hands very easily and comes off very easily. And you should also make sure that your workspace is covered with paper so you don't mess the table or the floor 
too much. Now, let's see. Read and Betsy, why don't we, why don't we read again? Let's see, we can use our, our fingers here, uh, our other hand puppets we created with uh, uh, a brush, but on this hand, we're gonna use our fingers. It's a little bit messy. Reed, what are you doing over there? I'm making kind of a beak mouth out of yellow paint. Aha, uh -huh, good. All right, and what kind of character is that? It's, it's like a, um, it's gonna be the king of, um, like a swamp or something. Good, and what are you doing, Betsy? Well, I'm making the character Orky. Orky, I like that name. And right now, uh, we're painting his hair blonde. <laughs> Okay. And uh, what does Orky do? Well, he doesn't do much because he's a visitor for, um, on the planet Earth. Orky is a tourist. Okay, <laughs> good. <And> what, <laughs> what other designs are you going to be putting on your puppet? Well, I have his mouth already, red mouth, mm -hmm. and... Maybe we could put some more white. Oh, now, what's the white here? Oh, that's just the stalks of his eyes. Okay. And see how you're coming there, Reed? Pretty good. Let's see the side profile. Good. That's really nice. I need to make a white tooth for him. A white tooth? Yeah. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> That's okay. What's fun about this is you can take a hand position and then look at the hand position and then decide exactly where the face should go, where the eyes should go, or maybe where the mouth should go, what kinds of clothes your creature would be wearing. And he might have three eyes, like my character. Maybe he'll have only one eye. Maybe he'll even have uh, two mouths. Anything that you want. And then create a story to go along with your characters. It's easy, and it's fun, and all you need is water base paint. I really enjoyed that drama of the bridge. Thanks, Meta Man. Now, I have some superb drawings to show you in the gallery. Let's take a look at the first one. Now, this is by the Secret City Club member, Vladimir. Now, Vladimir is really comfortable with his charcoal pencil. He's very loose, he's sketchy. He's got the idea of shading, using his finger on the face to blend the shading around, give it a nice tone. Beautiful drawing, this is really inventive. Excellent job, Vladimir. Let's look at another one. The gallery here is really a neat example of all these students' efforts to be creative and to use these magic words and to apply them to the piece of paper. Now look at Reed here. Reed Miller came up with this plan. Uh, this is not for the planet. I believe this is for the moonscape inhabitants. Look at this. It's on wheels. <laughs> is that, that's really imaginative. Good job, Reed. I mean, you put a little bit of color in there to emphasize the face and the ear. Can you pick out the details of the face? That's interesting, isn't it? Nice shading. Good foreshortening. Let's look at another drawing. Now, since Betsy was here today doing the hand puppets, I thought I'd put one of her drawings in here also. Look how nice those... See, she uses density here. See how the statues go away into the distance. They get fainter and less distinct. Nice shading, beautiful shading. Now, you see the texture of the paper comes through when you shade. If you use a really nice textured paper, that texture will bleed through when you shade, and it gives your, the whole drawing a nice flavor, a nice tone. See the little pyramids with feet and eyes? <laughs> Isn't that adorable? That's really creative, Betsy. Good job. I love that drawing. In, in the sky, she put some lines to emphasize the clouds. Beautiful drawing, Betsy. Now, let me look at another drawing here. Now, here's another one by Reed Miller. Now, you see the inhabitant for the moonscape up in the water? It looks almost like the Loch Ness Monster, but this is on the moon, in the, in the ocean on the moon. Reed decided that there was going to be some water systems on the moon. I'm on the Ender Planet now in the Secret City, my Secret City Kingdom. We have the planet up here, and I already have my entrance down into the Ender Planet. So what I'm drawing is a bridge. Since we used density, we, we started drawing bridges today. I outlined a nice bridge, a roadway winding down the stalactite, and it comes into a tunnel right here, and the bridge branches off. So I'll go ahead and keep drawing along like this. Now remember, if you have your pencil or your paper, take some notes on this and draw some ideas for your own Secret City mural or your own Secret City Kingdom. Now, I gave you an idea a little while ago. I just want to repeat that idea. It's a really good idea if you get some friends together and you go talk to your principal or your school teacher and see if you can't start one of these neat Secret City murals in your own cafeteria or in your classroom. If you're really brave, you might even want to ask your mom and dad if you could hang some paper on your wall in your room. I'm going to draw the thickness of the roadway and 
complete and darken this side of the bridge in. See, I don't like making these posts really boring, just coming straight down. So I decided I'd put almost like a simple tabletop. It's a good exercise for direction one and direction seven, putting that little cast shadow underneath there. Now I'll draw another tunnel and make the roadway come out of the tunnel, loop around. You see, I already penciled in a really interesting way to support the next layer. I'll draw a nice foreshortened circle around here. Put the thickness on it. I need to change my pen so I can get a sharper point. Okay, and then I'll draw another foreshortened circle wrapping around the top support. Now there's this really neat artist called Dr. Seuss, and he draws all kinds of interesting bridges and roadways and tunnels and really fascinating shapes and trees inside all his drawings. And I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. And if you get a chance, look at some Dr. Seuss illustrations you'll just really love some of the ideas. You can use some of those ideas in your own drawing. That's how you learn how to draw. I'll make this wind. I'll watch, see how this road comes down. Watch this. It's going to wind around and come down. Come out here. Wind around and down. The roadway just disappears behind the stalactite. Isn't that kind of interesting? I'll put the thickness here thickness of the roadway here. Okay, it disappears because it gets foreshortened because it wraps around and back behind here. You can see a little bit of thickness. And you can see a little bit of thickness here. Now, I've never seen a bridge that right in the middle of it, it spans out like that. But see, this is the secret city universe, so anything can happen. And this is almost like an optical illusion because you notice how the roadway branches out going away from you, but all of a sudden it comes towards you. So you can do anything you want. You can trick your eye. I like drawing little optical illusions in my drawing. Now I'm going to draw a support beam right here with a four shorts and circle at a slant. See, the slant matches the side of the cliff, so it helps support that road from falling. And then I'll darken it here. I'll draw another support that comes in just a bit. See that nice support system? And see, sometimes I don't follow my pencil lines exactly because they just don't fit. When I get my, my pen and my ink in there, I notice that this might be a little bit too slanted and it looks like it's sliding down. And I want to make sure the bridge is nice and strong and supports all the unibears that are walking around down here. Those unibears are pretty interesting characters, aren't they? They're very, very smart. And they know how to build really strong bridges, those unibears. And so they develop this little system right here. What I'm drawing is a support system. What it is, it's two foreshorts and rings with a post between it, and it supports the different layers. Pretty ingenious, huh? And as I come across here, I draw a T, a little T bar, and it connects to the end of the bridge. This one is already connected. And I'll draw another T bar, almost like a horseshoe, and then connect that with the thickness. And I'll do the same thing right here. I'll draw the thickness. I'll draw the end of the support bar. Draw the T bar. See how neat that looks? It really supports those layers and holds them apart. Now, I've never seen anything really like this. I just kind of made it up and I invented it. Now, anytime you want to invent these little extra intricate little details like how to support a bridge or how to make a car run or... Oh, hello, Cindy. You're bringing me a hat today. You brought me a flower and now you're bringing me a hat. Oh, what is this for? For me to eat some cereal out of? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Oh, you're concerned about my health, huh? Because you, you know I'm constructing a bridge here, and so you want me to wear a hard hat. That's awfully sweet. Thank you, Cindy. You want to come into... Well, see, I told you you could, Cindy, but you, not today you can't. Oh, you can climb down the ladder, but not today. Maybe later on... Cindy, no, really, you will, I promise. See, what I'm going to do here is I'm adding the bridge wrapping around the stalactite. And later on, when I finish this roadway, maybe you can come walking down the roadway. Does that sound fun? <laughs> Thank you for the hard hat, Cindy. But I'm not going to use it because I'm just drawing right now, okay? You leaving now? Well, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, Cindy. A little bit of shading. <laughs> Cindy, she always brings me such interesting little gifts. I think she was worried about me getting hurt when I'm constructing my bridge. I don't think she knows the difference between drawing something and actually doing it. I'll draw the other side of the stalactite. Now, I see the stalactite comes down and sh changes shape. So I'm just making it coming straight down, but wiggle the sides, add some texture, and add some design. All right, now we have the bridge winding around the stalactite. And oh, I forgot the thickness over here. Now, right here, I'll make it nice and dark. And whenever I have a 
chance I use as much dark you see right underneath the bridge here and here's a place where I can get my pin and make it nice and dark whenever I get a chance I love to use my black pin because it really makes that rock sit underneath the roadway it helps set objects apart from each other when you use your dark pen. And this is another opportunity. Boy, I just love doing this. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, he's starting to shade again. And I'll get nice and dark in here. Right here. A little bit up here. And down here. Use my next pin and I'll put a little. See, I have cross hatching coming all the way across the bottom with the bridge and the roadway coming off. So I'll use cross hatching on this thickness as it wraps around. Use my fine point pin, add some cross hatching right here. See, I try to be consistent with my shading all the way across. All the way up, and that shading will wrap all the way up to slag type. This is my favorite part. When you add to your Secret City mural or your Secret City Kingdom, use all these neat ideas and use the magic words. Draw, draw, draw. I'll see you next time. <laughs>